Kimberly, thanks for joining me this Friday um, for the live stream. It's super rainy here in Texas and I'm sure everywhere, so it's kind of gloomy. Um, so I just wanted to show you, we got something new this week. Uh, we got our Threadology box so that if you sign up for our charity sew along, which is this quilt, it's going to come in a, mag a box like this that has a magnetic closure and um, it's got a cute aqua inside. So this is just like a prototype of um, kind of one of the uh, things that's going to come with your charity quilt. So I just wanted to show you all that since that came in the office. And then um, I wanted to talk to y'all about the Perfect 10 ruler. We are selling a ton of these. Um, it's probably our best selling ruler in the last two years. So this is selling really well. And I wanted to remind y'all, we've got the book coming in about one to two weeks. It's $14.95. If you pre-order, it's 15% off and it's got 16 patterns. So less than a dollar a pattern. And we're gonna have this sew along. It starts October 9th and ends December 11th, and this is going to be the um, the cute little uh, quilt. It's at the my quilt is at the quilters right now, so I'll show it to y'all next week. I get it back on Monday. Super excited about that. So um, just to kind of keep up with what we're going to be doing on the Fat Quarter Shop blog, it's going to be this is going to be our next thing: the Perfect Ten book, Perfect Ten ruler, and then we're going to be putting free patterns. You have to have the book though to refer to the instructions for that. So that's kind of one thing. And then um, you know, make sure you follow us on YouTube. If you're a YouTube member, we have a surprise this week. If you go to your community tab, we have this puzzled pattern. It's a free pattern for you members that, that paid. So um, this is in your community tab. I just thought something fun to give y'all. And I'm gonna sew it up and hand picked by Riley Blake. So you can see it's kind of got a similar look. And this fabric, this is just some fabric that I got in advance and it's so pretty. Um, and I think it'll look great with that. So. Just something that I'm gonna do for fun and thought that um, some of y'all might like this. But these are some of the prints that I like from Handpicked. It's not in stock yet, it'll be in stock next month. But I kind of thought, you know, new fabric, old pattern, great way to pair things together. So there's that. And then we're gonna be having a swoon along. So um, Camille has donated this wonderful quilt and an enamel pin, uh, sorry, enamel pin that matches and she has signed it. So the winner is going to get this and the pen and Camille's gonna help us pick the winner. It starts now and it ends on October 18th. So if you go to the blog, thatquartershop.com, go to the blog, it's got all the details. Basically you want to post your finished block and hashtag FQS swoon along so that we can see your block. We this The contest we're using is using the Swoon 16 pattern, which is a 16 inch block pattern, uses 16 fat quarters, and um, you can get the pattern, you can get either the paper or the PDF pattern at Fat Quarter Shop, and all the instructions um, are in the pattern, but we do have a video that Camille uh, filmed for us that has tips on how to make this block, so you wanna check that out. So I was just gonna show you this is an awesome opportunity to win something. And I'm gonna just show you some other fun stuff. I made this block. This is the actual Swoon original block, just so that you can see the difference in the two. So this is her original block, which I think was 24, and then this is the, the Swoon 16, which is a smaller version, just so y'all can see the difference. And both of them use Camille's fabric, and it's funny that we both use the, the cute aqua. So there's that, and then I was gonna show you some other cool things that um, some of our employees have made. Um, Susan, who works in customer service, made this. It is a table runner using the Swoon 16 block, so you can see what a different um, look this gives. And this is Front Porch by Sherry and Chelsea and Moda Fabrics. So she just did three blocks, cute table runner. And then Terry, who works in customer service, made this. And this, I think, is the Swoon Mini Block. Um, it's much smaller. So there's four Swoon patterns, actually. And so I think this one is the Mini, and this is Storybook Ranch by 
by Wyndham Fabrics. Super cute. And she presses open so you can see like how flat her seams are. So that's by her. And then Nancy, who's worked for us forever, like probably 15 years, made this. This is Aubergine, I think that's how you say it, by uh, Maywood. And she made this, it's really pretty, just for a different look, just to kind of show you all the different things you can do. So we definitely want all of you to sew along. And even if you have a Swoon 16 you know, quilt that you made in the past, you can still enter it. Um, so there's that. We also, this week on the blog, are showing um, a video on a bag. So we did a bag with Joanna from Fig Tree Quilts about a year ago. It's called the Kimberly Sack Bag. And so um, if you want to see just some variety, we put some bags on our, on our blog just to see kind of different things you can do with the pattern. It's a paid pattern written by Joanna that's only, it's exclusive to Fat Quarter Shop, so you can only find it on our site. So we have this bag, and this is a art gallery canvas fabric. And um, Deborah made this one. Sorry, I'm trying to give everybody credit. So Deborah made this one. And I like that one because it's canvas, so it's going to hold up. This one is by Elva and Customer Service, and it's a panda. And that is, um, I don't remember what fabric. I think that's Riley Blake fabric. Uh, panda Love by Kelly for Riley Blake fabric. Yeah, so it is Panda Love by Riley Blake. And then Elva also made this one, which is Moda Fabric, Kelly Pickens. Um, so it's just a cute little bag. And you can just carry all kinds of stuff in it. And then this one, Nancy, Nancy made this one. She's got a cute little button. She used Floral Splendor uh, by Andover Fabrics. So that's Andover. And then this one's my favorite. Lily made it. It is, uh, oh, Dot Dot Boo by Moda. So that's like a cool thing on our blog if you just want to see. Um, we're always just trying to give you cool ideas of things you can do. Um, so there's that. So we've got um, Perfect Ten Book, Swoon Along, the bag, which is called the Kimberly Sack Bag, the Threadology Quilt, and um, that's kind of what we have going on. Um, I'm going to give you some tips on pinning now. Um, we've had some requests. So the first thing I would say about pinning is you have to find a pin that really works for you. I think that's the most important thing. So when I first started, I used to use the um, floral, let's see, flower head pins. That's what I used to use when I first started. And it worked and it was great. But as I got more experienced and my point, I wanted my points to be more accurate, they were just a little too thick. So the pin that I like to use is Collins C103. It has a little white um, head on it, a little flat, a little, I don't know what you call it, little ball head point. But the thing about these is they are thin and they are super sharp. So if you're like a beginner, I would not recommend this because these are very sharp and they're going to stick you. Um, these stick me all the time. I actually have a, um, the hanger on this has some of these in there and um, I bled all over myself trying to hang that up the other day with Kevin. Um, so they're very dangerous. Uh, sometimes, but I like them because they're long and thin. So the first thing is, you know, if you're new, I would use a thicker, a thicker pen, just so you get used to it. Because when you're grabbing these, you kind of got to get used to it. But I like long and thin. And when you're pinning, I just got a couple of little things. What I like to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin in the center. You can pin sideways like this, but if you pin sideways like this, when your foot goes along, it is going to shift this. So I never pin that way. I pin straight up and down. And I pin as close, um, there's like a little, and I'm trying to nest my seams. I get as close to the intersection as I can and I go straight down. That way when your foot is coming along, it doesn't shift this. When I get right to the pin, I will pull, sorry, when I get my foot right to the pin, I will pull it out. I won't pull it out before so that it stays there. I also pin at the end of my intersection. 
straight up and down and I will just you know I will just hold this one but I pin pretty much everything um, if I'm in a huge hurry I'm not gonna pin but I will uh, I'm 90% of the time will pin um, but I think really the most important thing on pinning is pinning straight instead of sideways getting the pin that works best for you I mean pins are very inexpensive I mean these pins are probably like three or four dollars so if you buy them and you don't like them you can get different ones um, so I think that's the beauty of pins is there's a ton of them and um, you just have to find what works for you um, so now I'll just take any questions uh, that you have for me this week I don't have that much and then send me suggestions for next week I don't have next week planned out exactly yet so um, I've been working on if y'all want to know what I've been working on I've been working on a new book we have a new book that we will be able to show you guys on October 22nd on our website. I've been working on it for about two weeks. It has 72 blocks. Some of the blocks finish at four and a half inches. So I'm hoping to, to keep going on that and to finish it. So that's kind of why I don't have as much just because I'm working on a new book. Then we also have uh, another book that we just designed this week that's going to be totally awesome. It's using an Andover fabric. So that's going to be awesome and uh, that's kind of what we've been doing behind the scenes so let me know if y'all have any questions or what y'all want to talk about today yeah well Teresa says woohoo Friday starting off right um, and Teresa is one of our biggest YouTube supporters yay um, Teresa, Teresa. Um, Dev says yay made it to my first live show um, lots of people are saying thank you for the free pattern the members oh yeah so I hope yeah so on the members yeah we just thought that would be like a cute little bonus we're going to be trying to do more stuff like that like every other week um and bonito was asking can you explain what's great about the perfect 10 ruler oh so the perfect 10 ruler let me find it it's in my stack hold on so this works great for layer cakes and we wrote in our book um kind of how to do it but the thing that i like about it is a lot of times, you know, if you have your regular, I only use creative grids. So when I use creative grids, there's a ton of markings, five eighths, seven eighths, three eighths, one eighths. That's all great. You need that. But if you're just doing a simple pattern and you want to see like a three inch square, it is so easy. The lines, you know, it's just very, so that this is great for when you're cutting smaller pieces and just simple two inch, two and a half, three inch. So this is for um, just very beginner patterns. And I love the simplicity of just the lines it's just easy to cut simple squares so that's what i like about it um but it is selling we have placed like five orders it's crazy how popular it is um but it is a great ruler um i've loved working with it and we designed it so of course i like it but it's really it's really great for just cutting squares and squaring up stuff Nice. Uh, Deb was saying uh, all the projects that you showed are super pretty. Oh, thanks. Uh, Cindy was asking, do you sell the pins you were talking about? We do. We sell them at Fat Quarter Shop. So if you just type C103. Um, they're also in the description. Oh, yeah, they're in the description. Sorry, if you want to look below. Um, and so are like the swoon patterns. All four of the swoon patterns are below also. And Sue says there were uh, there were pins recently in the monthly boxes. I love them, but I can't find them, which of course I forgot the name of them, but they had a candy colored ball head. They are so sharp and oh, they yes. work for her. Do you remember what they are? Um, why don't, yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I know exactly, I think they're called marbled head, um, but they're very similar to those. Uh, if you want to just get on Facebook and Kimberly Stitch Squad and just tag me, just tag Kimberly Jolly, I'll answer that. I'll find, I can find it within like probably five seconds on our site. But I think they might have the name Marbled. It's definitely on the So Sampler insert, but I don't have that here. But yeah, very similar and those are really good. All right. Annie says, good morning. Love your live streams. And she's got a few questions so can you explain a little about the guides for sewing machines that eliminates the need to draw a line from corner to corner so i think like yeah i can i machine. could probably just show it okay okay yeah, so let me move this and i'll show you let's see okay Any tour? yeah studio 
Um, and while you're setting up, someone on Instagram was asking, will you be at the quilt festival in Houston? We won't. We have done that before. Um, it is just so much work. And it takes away from our website and our kids and our boys play baseball. My daughter dances. It's just too much. Um, so no, we won't be there. So I actually already have this on here. So I have the uh, decorative tape by Bonnie and Camille. It's basically like washi tape. There's also some Lori Holt tape like this that we sell. Or you can just use plain painter's tape from Home Depot. So what you do, I guess I can take this one off and put a new one down. You can see it just comes right up. It doesn't leave any residue or anything. So when I put this down, I like to have, I don't want to have a white on the edge because you can see the white will kind of blend in to my machine. So I want to have something on the edge on the left edge that has a color. So I'm going to pick this one that has red. And then what I'm going to do is put my foot up, put my needle down, and then I'm just going to eyeball it. There's no exact science. I'm just going to put the tape right in the center of the needle, not to the right, not to the left, and just come out a little bit. You have to be off of these feed dogs, other because I've done that before, and it'll so your tape will just go into the feed dogs. So you just put it kind of um, right on your needle, pull your hand out, and just um, make it nice and straight. And it's kind of, I've just done it so many times, I know um, kind of how to do it. And then when you put your fabric down, let me put on the right foot and I'll show you. If you put your fabric down and you want to go from corner to corner, you just start on one corner and you put the intersection right at this, follow it on the line. And that way you never have to draw a line. Now, if you did this and it didn't go over exactly, which it did, you can adjust your tape. Um, but it's super easy. These are super inexpensive. It's an inexpensive product. Um, I keep these right by my machine. I've got a couple more. They're actually over there so that I can use those. So there's other colors and things. All right, are we gonna head back over? Yeah. Okay. Going back in, I guess. Uh, somebody else was asking, what is the quilt hanging up there? So this quilt is called Threadology. We, uh, as a company, um, try to raise thirty or forty thousand dollars for a charity every year. Um, going forward, we're just going to be working with Make a Wish. So we try to sell a lot of kits. We use funds from the kits and other sales. So as a company, Fat Quarter Shop will donate ten thousand dollars. Moda Fabrics will donate ten thousand dollars, and then we're going to try to raise between between ten and twenty thousand dollars for Make a Wish from our customers. Um, so basically we have options. We have, can you hand me that? We have a kit and the kit is going to come packaged in this beautiful little box with a magnetic closure that you can store your, um, your fabric in and you can store your blocks in it as you sew. It's going to be available in January, but we're pre-selling it now. It also has a, we can, you can also buy a piece to backing, um, where you use blocks in the center and some fabrics on the back. So we've got a backing and a kit available for sale. We use the proceeds of the sale of that to donate to make a wish. But if you don't want to buy the kit, totally fine. The pattern will be available free starting February 1st. And we will be giving every two weeks a pattern available for sale for free download. And then what we do is just ask for donations to make a wish in return for the free pattern that will be available on our blog. And um, if you buy the kit, you get the entire pattern up front just so that you can you can go ahead and make it. It's kind of a bonus of getting the kit. Um, so that's what this is. 
All right, and uh, Lily is asking, is the quilting on that quilt called shells or is there a template for it? So this is Baptist fan and uh, if you're interested, I could I could um, give you my long arm quilter. He hits uh, mylongarm.com, and his name is Mike. And he, I just do pantographs, um, but it's just a Baptist fan, and it's larger. I wanted something larger since the the blocks are so small. I didn't want the quilting to overpower the um, blocks. All right, we've got lots of questions coming in. Let's see. Um, someone's asking, how do I join the blog? Oh, the blog. So if you just go to fatquartershop.com, on the top right, there's a little text. It says blog. You can go there. And then on the right side, kind of in the middle, you can you can put your email and, you, and the blog will be emailed to you once a day. Or every time we post, which we try to post five, um, five times a week at least. And I know blogs are not as popular as they used to be, but... We still put that content out there to inspire you so that there's free things for you and ideas and just inspiration because not everybody's on Instagram and Facebook. Um, RACRX7 is asking, do you ever have any guy customers? Yeah, we have a lot of men customers. Um, one of them is Gabriel Fuentes and he sends me messages all the time. Um, we've got a couple of men in my Kimberly Stitch Squad. Obviously, Mr. Domestic, like if you're looking to, uh, Mr. Domestic is a great one to follow on Facebook. He's got great YouTube videos. Um, John Adams used to be more involved. He's not as involved as he used to be, but he's done books. So yeah, for sure. Um, and actually, Gabriel Fuentes is asking, I want to start applique, where would you suggest I start? So I would start with Aditta has done, Aditta Sitar has done some applique videos for us on our YouTube channel. I would watch hers. We also have some applique videos from Jill Finley. Uh, I would, I would just watch on YouTube those free videos and kind of get a feel um, for kind of what they do. It's, I'm horrible at applique. <laughs> But yeah, those I think those are the two kind of pros that really do it uh, all the time and know the best. So that's what I that's where I would start. And Annie's asking, have you used the Creative Grids Wavy Ruler? I have not used it, but it sells really well for us. I think I just ordered it this morning. Um, but no, I am really just a. I like to do things easy, so I like to do a lot of patchwork. I try not to do applique because I don't feel like I'm good at it. Um, so yeah, no, I haven't. Uh, and Teresa says you got some of the Meet the Makers quilts back in stock, didn't you? Yeah, so I got a bunch of the Meet the Makers uh, quilts back in stock. Um, this is going to be our last batch. Um, so we ran out the first time and I think it was 18 hours. So we have them back, but once they're gone, they are going to be gone. Um, Gabriel says, thanks for the shout out. Um, let's see, uh, how do I turn the vlog? Oh, Sue, earlier she had the question about uh, the pins from her sew sampler. She's just asking where would she send the picture to? Uh, oh, so if you want to know those pins, you can either email customer service, which is service at fatquartershop.com, um, or you can, if you're on Facebook, if you want to join Kimberly Stitch Squad, that's my personal I mean, it's a business group, but it is my group. And so I try to monitor questions and answer questions um, about things. So if you just post it on there, I will either answer or sometimes customers answer before me because they're on there before me. So it just whoever gets there first will answer it for you. Um, and Lori's asking, can you recommend any great patterns for scrap busting? For scrap busting. So uh, Kim Deal has a couple of books called Simple Whatnots, and those are just all scrappy. Um, and she uses a lot of like little pieces. She calls them like fat sixteenths, which are like I don't even know, like they're tiny sizes. So those would be good. And even though it's Kim Deal and she has reproduction eighteen hundreds, you can do that in any kind of fabric. So I would say that would be a good one, just because she uses tiny pieces. And obviously Lori holds all her books like Farm Girl Vintage, Quilty Fun. She uses scraps, so anything Lori Holt, I would I would kind of start there. Julia's asking any new patterns from Lori Holt. 
Okay, so her new book is going, it's coming back from the printer any day, probably two to three weeks. Um, it is called Vintage Christmas. Um, so that is what we're working on. And of course, behind the scenes, we are working on a ton of other things. With Lori Holt, it, it takes much longer to come out with things because her stuff is very detailed. She redoes things like she'll do a block and then she'll sew it and she'll say, oh, that's not perfect enough. So we're working on the next stuff, but I obviously can't say what it is, but I think it'll be popular. Um, Corey says she uses the washi tape as well that you use on your sewing machine. Um, what is the thick pencil I've been seeing on the live streams lately? Oh, so the thick pencil is me just totally copying Lori Holt like I always do. If you get on Kimberly Stitch Squad, I can send you a link. I bought them on Amazon. So I found them at Lori's house because when I go to Lori's house, we take, um, to do her photo shoots, we take the book and I just, I take all kinds of notes whenever um, I'm there looking at, did she use bias binding or did she use straight binding or did she add rickrack or is there no rickrack so that the pattern is as perfect as it can be. And um, I, she had these pencils and I liked them. So while I was sitting there, I bought some. Um, Sherry's asking, what is the deadline for the Make-A-Wish kit? The Make-A-Wish kit, so we have to place our order with Moda next week and um, we just pick a number based on reservations and then when we sell out, we sell out. We try to keep enough kids in so that we have enough through like February. That's our goal. Sometimes we have a ton left over, sometimes we don't, it just depends. I think this one um, is gonna be really popular just because of the look of it. Um, People really love the patchwork and it's, we wanted to do something this year that was different and that could stand alone. And so I think we accomplished that. So I think you have plenty of time, but um, it's kind of one of those deals where we place the order with Moda, our deadlines next week. And if it, like if there's a huge surge, they could go all sell out or they, you know, we can't like increase the order. It's a one-time thing. All right, Lisa's asking, uh, last week on the live stream, you showed the ghost quilt binding. Can you explain why you sew the binding in a quarter of an inch instead of on the edge? Thanks. Um, yeah, I could go grab that quilt if y'all wanna wait. <laughs> Let me go grab it, it's in my car and I'll show you. Right there. Corey, that's funny. Uh, let's see. Well, if you guys want a mini tour of the studio while she's grabbing that, most of you have seen this already. But there's a thread wall and the cutting space and the sewing machine. I know someone had a question earlier about her um, sewing table. It is custom made. Now she's back. Okay. So here's my ghost quilt. It's in my car because I take it wherever my kids have stuff and just do binding as I go. The kit is available online. We sold a lot of them yesterday, so I don't know if there's any left. We are going to make more. We're just waiting for patterns to come from the vendor. So there's a video on YouTube that I filmed probably three years ago and it is called a hand binding with the binding tool and it just shows how I do binding. So. This is what I do. I'll take some of these clips off. So when I sewed the binding on, you can see the binding. I leave the binding right on the edge of the quilt, but then when I'm trimming, I trim a quarter inch away so that the quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt top, there's extra batting there and extra backing. And the reason I do that is when you pull this over, it fits perfectly. I don't want to have, if this wasn't there and I folded this over, you would have all this empty space. So this is how I've always done it. Um, I always leave a quarter inch. So I will trim when I get this back for my quilter because um, I always just get a pantograph. I, before I put my binding on, trim a quarter inch away. I trim a triangle on the edge so that when I fold this over, there's not a lot of bulk, but I do not put this triangle 
or cut this diagonal, whatever you want to call this, until my binding is on. So yeah, that's why I do it. And then I put the binding clips on. And then I just always leave it in a bag um, with my... I can't remember what we call this. It's like a binding. It's designed by Vanessa Gertzen. Uh, there's a video on it. It's called binding something. So it has my um, thread, my needles, and then when I'm done, I put my my little binding um, clips in here. And then I just always keep this in my car, which is why I had to run to my car. And um, why, the reason why there's not a really big picture of this quilt on our website is because I haven't finished the binding. But um, hopefully I will do that today. And then if you want to see the back, I put um, the minky on the back. Um, cause I'm giving it to my kids, uh, and they love the soft and, and I love how with Minky, your quilting really shows up more than on cotton, but you'll notice you cannot do a super tight, um, design. You just have to do it a little bit loose. So that is that quilt. Oh, someone says they really like the binding bag idea. Oh yeah. So, um, Lily will put a link to it in the description of this after we're done. I'll just have to figure out what it's called. Maybe somebody online knows. Finding something. Um, Annie Jan says, I see you got your pink Aliso. Haha, uh -huh, because I gave him a little tour. Of oh, uh -huh. yeah, so that is my pink Aliso. Yeah, I did. My yellow one, like I said, I just wear them out, and one day it just started. I don't know, it was just acting up and I had just like had it. And so I was like, ah, it's my excuse to get a pink one. Uh, let's see, uh, is the Ghost Quilts video on YouTube? I think they just mean the previous live stream where we showed. Oh, so the previous live stream where we talked about the Ghost Quilt is last Friday, so you can find it on YouTube. But we have a kit, we have a pattern. The only reason we don't have more kits right now is we're just waiting for the patterns to come. Um, and Gabriel says, if we want to use our own fabric with the Make-A-Wish, is it fat quarter friendly? The it is uh, that is in process right now. It is uh, it could be fat quarter friendly. It's not a it's not an easy do, it's not an equal division. Um, I honestly can't remember right now because we're in the pattern writing stage um, because I actually sew this and then we go backwards and write the pattern. So I can probably answer that question in about two weeks. I, we used an even number of fabric, but I do not think it's fat quarters. I think it's more like three-eighths of a yard or five, maybe it's half yard friendly. Half yard or five-eighths, but I don't know the answer, but in about two weeks, I will know the answer. And you can just like, you always talk to me, just put it on the, um, the Facebook group. I just, I won't know for like a couple of weeks to give you an exact answer. All right, uh, we've got lots of questions coming in. Um, let's see, we'll take a few more. Linda says, so leave a quarter inch of batting sticking out past the edge of the binding. Do I have that right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and some people hate that. I mean, I have done that for 15 years. Um, I, and, and, you know, when you first pull it back, you're going to have to push because it's not going to be like 100%. But once you put these binding clips on, your batting just kind of rests into there. Um, but that's how I do every quilt. If, if I wasn't going to leave the batting on, I would only do a two inch binding. These are two and a half and my quilter knows do not cut my, do not trim my quilt. Some long arm quilters will trim your quilt as part of their service and he knows that on mine I don't, I don't want it trimmed. I like to do that myself. Um, and lots of people are saying the name of the binding bag is the goody goody binding kit? Yes, goody goody binding kit, yes. Yes, and there's a video on how to do it. And there's a blog post with like stuff. It's a free tutorial designed by Layla Boutique, Vanessa Gertzen. So um, that's all hers. And Gwenna says, how big is the ghost quilt? Uh, it's like 60, 62 by 64, I think. I am not 100% sure, but I think that's right. All right, and then we'll take a few from Instagram. Um, yeah, lots of people saying the goody goody binding kit. Uh, someone said, can you both come to the UK? To the UK, yeah, you want to play? Hey, for us, we'll come. 
Um, what width binding do you use? I use two and a half, so I'll cut my strips two and a half. Okay. Uh, yes. Oh, and on Instagram, they want the link to the video. Um, I guess we can post it in an Instagram post later. So okay. So you can watch it on YouTube and Facebook. Um, but yeah. We're getting a lot, so it's up to you. Yeah, we can get Okay. Um, one more question on the binding. Do you cut it two and a half inches? Yeah, so I cut my binding two and a half. And most of the time I do straight binding. Um, I will do bias when I need the look of, um, for example, this was done on the bias. So you can tell that I cut that on the diagonal. And this was just done on the straight. Now for bias, it waves a lot, so I'm happy to do bias on a small project like this, but on a big project like this, I would I would do it, but it, it does take longer to do bias, just because it is um, stretchy. And Sherry's asking, how does that extra quarter inch of batting affect the corner miter? So on the corner, I'll show you what I do. Um, so, I will leave all the batting on there when I put my batting on. I will not cut this until, um, but I cut a diagonal, just straight across, not into the fabric. And as I go, if there's too much bulk there, I'll just take my scissors and trim it down. But I do not put the diagonal until my fabric is on so that I can get this clean corner on here. And Joanna says, how do you match different fabrics for a quilt? Mixing and matching different designs is confusing to me. I find it hard to know if they go together, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I struggle with that too. Um, I think it's really hard to mix and match. Um, I, The reason I started Fat Quarter Shop is so that I could sell stuff together. So like collections, because nobody did that before Fat Quarter Shop came along. Nobody really sold all these uh, collections. We do curated bundles, so like um, if you want some colors that go together, we have lots of bundles that are exclusive to us that we curate where we mix different collections. Maybe you could start there. Um, our gallery has some fat quarter boxes and half yard boxes where they mix and match. So I would say let someone else do it for you. You know, shop at Fat Quarter Shop or another shop that has stuff that's mixed and matched. Or if you're nervous, go to a quilt shop, you know, your local brick and mortar and see if they'll help you match. Um, the thing that I find with that is you got to find somebody who likes your style. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I, I struggle with that um, too. And you'll see that a lot of the things that I show you that I make on the live stream are all from the same collection um, just because I stick to. I kind of just stick to kind of that just because I know it works. Uh, Joanna says, what's the best size of rotary to use, 45 millimeter or 60? 45. I um, only use 45. Uh, 60 is just too big and too bulky and I, I only use the ergonomic. I'll show you what I use. This is what I learned on 25 years ago, and this is the only one I use. I do have a 60 degree, but I struggle when it, I just struggle when it doesn't have this. I can't hold it right. So um, if you're doing something super thick and you want something that could cut through, I would, if it was me, I would use the um, endurance blade. Is that what it's called, Lily? Yes. Yeah, it's called. It's a new blade. It's called Endurance. So I would put an Endurance blade on because it's sharper, and I would do that before I would. Okay. Sorry, our battery died on our camera. Okay, okay, I think we're back. So yeah, if, if, but if you're doing something super small, like English paper piecing, I would get the 18 millimeter. So the general rule of thumb is the smaller the project, the smaller you use. I only use 45 millimeter. 
Great. Um, and just making sure with everyone that, okay, everyone can see us now. Perfect. Okay, yeah, we're just getting more questions. Excellent. Um, there's one question. Oh, have you thought of coming to Sweden for one of our quilt shows? I don't know. I haven't really gone anywhere. Uh, my kids, but yeah, I mean, when I when my kids are a little bit older, I'll start traveling more, especially when they're teenagers. Like I can go to stuff like that and they can come with me. They're a little young right now and they're in sports and they're in all kinds of things, so. Um, someone said the ghost quilt got you and that's why we went dark. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Um, okay, yeah, so that? And on the ghost quilt, one thing that I think would be really fun is, um, if you don't want to tackle, I made this quilt in two days. I mean, obviously I'm not done because I don't have the binding, but just a simple, uh, pillow with it would be so cute. Um, so I'm actually thinking about making pillows for my boys. Uh, the thing with this quilt though is they're going to have to share it. So it gets kind of touchy of who gets it first so that I don't play favorites. So it's kind of one of those things where I'm not going to like actually, I don't even know why I'm telling you all this, but I'm not going to actually hand it to one of my kids. I'm just going to put it on the living room couch and whoever takes it to the room gets it for until the other kids steal it from them. Um, Donna is asking, do you finish the binding on the back by machine or hand? Oh, hand. Always by hand. Um, most of my employees do it by machine. I don't have the patience. Um, I love binding and cutting fabric are my favorite. So I love to, and I'll just leave it in my car. And uh, like this weekend, we have baseball games. My daughter's trying out for the Nutcracker. Her dance is pretty far from our house. So I might like drive her to dance and just sit in my car for two hours to finish it. Because I have to be finished with it by Monday for the website. So somehow between now and Monday, it's got to get done. We've got lots of questions like what would you suggest for beginners? Um, I think we've talked about it on previous streams if you just want to direct people that way, like where to start as a beginner quilter. So as a beginner quilter, I would just watch a lot of my YouTube videos. Um, I would take classes. I would try to find a shop in your local area or a guild that has classes, uh, join a group because I think that you learn the most from your friends. And um, like I've said on previous things is, do what works for you like there's no quilt police and if you go to a store and they're like telling you oh you can only use this thread and you can only do this that is that's like so not true so do whatever works for you um but i would i would probably start with youtube and um a local store yeah. youtube's a great resource um catherine says is there a pdf of the ghost quilt she is not selling the she sells the pdf on her website her website is just just came June, I believe. She will not let us sell it at Fat Core Shop. So if you want to get it, uh, you can get it from her or you can buy the paper pattern from us. Is it maybe then came June? Yeah, then came June. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but if you want to email her and just be like, oh, we would love it if Fat Core Shop sold your PDFs, I would love that because I want to sell her PDFs. Okay. She has lots of cute, um, she has some, she has like four holiday ones. She's got the ghost. She's got like a little mistletoe. Um, she's got lots of cute stuff. Right. And just people are saying like they love our videos. Uh, they make complicated patterns seem easy. So hooray. Thanks. Um, and I, I did lose a few of the questions, guys. I'm sorry when we blocked out for a bit. Um, but I think it, we've been on for 45 minutes. Okay, so uh, definitely send me ideas for live stream next week. I have not um, come up with something because I'm working on my book stuff. Uh, and I will be working on book stuff all the way to Quilt Market. So anything y'all want to see definitely will help me out. So send comments uh, in the video comments and also send me notes on um, Kimberly Stitch Squad. Like us, like this video, like all our videos on YouTube, and we will see you next week.